His Eminence Peter Cardinal Turkson was one of the keynote speakers. The event took place in conjunction with the 36th session of the UN Human Rights Council. Days earlier, in his statement before the UN, the Apostolic Nuncio reiterated steps taken by the governments to ensure access to safe, available, affordable and acceptable drinking water must be deliberate, concrete and targeted toward the full realization of the right to water for all. The World Bank and other banks playing a key role in the creation of access to water. They often team up even with private investors. Yeah. If access to water, and consequently sanitation, is a human right, mm. should it not be freely subsidized by the government of rich countries, for example, instead of becoming interest and profit driven business for banks and Certainly. investors? Certainly. If, if World Bank and those rules come into, uh, come into the water supply chain, it should be a way of coming to enable a government fulfill its obligation towards its citizens. It should not be coming in to create companies that would make water a, commod a commodity. The International Center for Settlement of Investment Disputes states that about 10% of the world's water is privatized, especially in areas with severe water access problems. You can almost think, you can almost say that air is privatized. It's almost unthinkable for anybody to think that you know, the air we breathe can be privatized. And that's what it is with water. That's what it is with water. Water cannot be private. It's as much part of the natural environment, the natural habitat of the human family. Now, to privatize this is, if you want, it's all, it's all, if you want, may use the word even criminal, okay? There have been voices and currents in some of these UN quarters which have argued that we men and women not because of the way we're born, but it's because of how in our society, the role society ascribe and prescribe for us to follow. That is the part that, is the part that I think you know, we have difficulty with. We think that the, thing, the question about gender does is basically rooted in the makeup of our bodies. The World Health Organization predicts that by 2025, half of the world's population will be living in water-stressed areas. So how is the Vatican's dicastery for promoting integral human development contributing to solutions? So, what have we done lately? Lately, because there have been some other initiatives in the past. Lately, uh, we took Lada to Sea and we created a Lada to Sea challenge. Okay. And the Lada to Sea Challenge uh, was, a, was, a, was an initiative that invited young entrepreneurs to take Lada to Sea and to look at these challenges and to propose solutions. Okay, the last time there were some who came who have designed filters, water filters, that you can hook onto any type of water despite the source and then drink a water, a water filter clean and, and uh, also disinfected. Indeed, they came with a bucket full of dirty water. Okay, put it on. He drank it and I drank some of it and I'm still here. So I must be alive so I'm still to be here. Second thing concretely is like the case of Sudan, for example, is to, is to work out a system that can have the extra water that comes to inundate, to flood the areas, to get to the other dry areas. It's going to call for a little bit of technology as well as purification and disinfectation of water. In Laudato Si, Pope Francis called it integral ecology, the integration of humans and nature, society and ecosystems. He wrote that to denying access to water is to denying the right to life.